Going into Berkeley, I had no idea what to expect. I only half-assed a programming course the summer before and going into my first ever class was 60S 61A, the structure and interpretation of computer programs. And here we are at Pimentel Hall, which is where the computer science class took place. This red brick circular looking building that looks actually like a dungeon is actually where the class took place after the second week because in the class we were actually 2,000 students, but then once people stopped showing up to lecture, then, then they moved it into a smaller hall. This computer science class, man, I can't tell you how much I I struggled through this class. The first midterm, I got a 18 out of 40. Second midterm, I got a 19 out of 50. So I wasn't doing very hot. And everyone like, I don't know, came to Berkeley learning how to program like when they were like in the womb or something. So I was really far behind. I didn't know anything in programming languages. In this class, the main focus was on Python, but we also were taught functions, loops, recursion, a bit of object-oriented programming, a random ass language that no one uses called Scheme. And then we touched a bit on SQL or like SQL. So here we are at the Berkeley Haas School of Business. This is where the snakes live, that is the business people. In the Berkeley Haas School of Business, I had my History 7A class, or Introduction to the History of the United States, the United States from Settlement to Civil War. And I had to take this to fulfill one of my breadth requirements, but it, honestly, it wasn't a good choice. First, because I hate history. Second, because I hate writing essays. And this had a lot of both. So it wasn't the best option, but you know what? I got it over with. I don't really need to explain the topics learned in this class. It's in the title. <laughs> Finally, my third class of my first semester here at Berkeley was Math 53, a multivariable calculus, taught here at Tutuanel Hall. This is actually the College of Letters and Science. To be honest, class sounds like a mouthful, multivariable calculus, but it, it wasn't that bad. We learned a bunch of interesting topics such as, let me, I don't remember. Vector functions, Green's theorem, vector calculus, and differential equations. I know it doesn't sound very interesting, but at least it matches the vibe of this building, which yeah, it's pretty boring. <laughs> so that wraps up my first semester at college. Let's go. So after a pretty hard first semester, a sleep deprived and slightly unmotivated about his chances of succeeding in the university, Marcos enrolled in his second semester at Berkeley. This semester was packed with classes, so I'll go in order of difficulty. Starting with the easiest class I've ever taken here at Berkeley, and my first class of this semester is Bioengineering 100 here at Soda Hall. Uh, this area is where all the computer science buildings are at. Bioengineering or ethics in science and engineering. This class was really interesting actually, really easy. And it talked about different moral dilemmas that scientists and computer scientists have when creating applications and when developing technology. And also the professor had a really cute dog that he would bring in every single day, every single lecture. So that was definitely a bonus. So next in line in terms of difficulty is E16A or Designing Information and Systems 1. And this class is one of a two class part series. The only two classes of electrical engineering from my electrical engineering and computer science major. The linear algebra was fine, but there was something about those goddamn circuits that just my brain just could not absorb. <laughs> Here we are at Wheeler Hall, and this semester I had two classes here actually. The first one was CS61B, which is data structures. And to be honest, probably my favorite class ever at Berkeley, and it was only my second semester in Tikal. So we learned more in depth about object-oriented programming, interfaces, abstract classes, priority queues, and a bunch of other stuff. While in 61A, we had a lot of small projects, but homeworks mainly, 61B was very project-focused, and this was the first time I was introduced to like actually building coding projects, and that was like really fun, and that's what made me want to continue my degree in computer science and you know become a software engineer. 61B, really good class. On to the next one which is CS70. So if we go right here. All right, welcome to my last class, CS70. It was also in Wheeler Hall. <laughs> CS70 was by far the hardest class of the four that I mentioned uh, this semester. It was a class that we learned a lot on and it was fundamental to all my other classes later on at Berkeley. Oh man, like I don't even know where to start with this class. The con so apart from the concepts being too hard for my thick brain to even understand, I also taught it with the infamous Berkeley professor, Anant Sahai. And for those who don't know who Anant Sahai is, here's a little diagram of what he considers to be a normal schedule for a student at Berkeley. Not very good. So given that the professor was super, you know, super demanding and the class itself was already super hard, I had a tough time in this class. Concepts that we learned in this class include graphs, proofs, counting, conditional probability, random variables, and Markov chains. On to sophomore semester. Let's go. What he be doing though? Oh, he's covering. He's well. We saw you. We know where your. We know where your <laughs> stash is, bro. <laughs> Look at me. Where for your stash? Bro? Oh, she knows. She knows. That's a nice. ASMR voice of my Computer Science 188 Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. So I took this over the summer of 2020 and I thought it was going to be super interesting and useful. And it was interesting, but just not that useful. We learned about game trees, bays nets, Markov chains, and briefly touched on neural networks at the end of the course, which was pretty cool. But I think the problem here was that we learned many topics, but none of them in depth. So I left the class honestly with more questions than answers. 
So my software season rolled up and as you guys know, this was all online. So right now I'm just here on the Glade, which is a big part of UC Berkeley campus where people just love to like, you know, lay around, take pictures. But oh boy, the classes I took this semester really put me up to Berkeley's name. Starting off with my first class, CS61C, Great Ideas in Computer Architecture. This is probably the class I like the least out of all the classes I've taken at Berkeley. It's not because of the hard workload, the bunch of projects and homeworks and exams that we had, which is over the top. It was because the class was in C and assembly language. And for those who are not geek or computer science nerds, C and assembly is the worst of the worst. Like, it's awful, it sucks. Some topics that we learned in 61C included, uh, obviously learning C, assembly language, which was RISC-V, logism, CPU, and pipelining, thread level parallelism, virtual memories, and IOs. So to accompany a workload intensive class, I took CS170, probably perhaps one of the hardest computer science classes at Berkeley in terms of like pure concepts. The class is called Efficient Algorithms and Intractable Problems. This wasn't really workload intensive, it was just really hard to understand. But even then, I really enjoyed the classes and the topics we cover, which include divide and conquer, fast Fourier transformations, graphs, dynamic programming, and as usual, a bunch of other topics which I don't have time to explain. But yeah, really useful class as well. Definitely applicable to like software engineering, uh, future interview questions. What other way to continue this really light work semester with a physics class called Physics 7 or Physics for Scientists and Engineers. Going into this class, I thought, you know, it would be easy. It was physics, uh, the topics were mechanics and waves, and which I've taken in high school and I was like, okay, well, it can't be that much harder, right? Well, wrong. It was so hard, made me appreciate physics majors a hell of a lot more. And lastly, I took Native American Studies R1A, which is basically just a filler class I had, to, I had to take to fulfill some certain requirements. And honestly, there's not much to say about it. It was pretty easy, essays, that's it. So on to my second semester of my sophomore year. The first class I took is Data 100, which is Principles and Technique of Data Science. This class, along with CS170 that I talked about earlier, are probably the two classes that have been most useful in my you know, software engineering degree um, because they're more applicable and not so theoretic. So this data science class include topics such as pandas, regex, simple and multiple linear regression, gradient descent, logistic regression, and some probability and SQL. I definitely recommend this class if you're thinking about taking it. E16B, this is the second part of the two-part course series on electrical engineering that I took at Berkeley. And to be honest, I liked it a lot more than 16A. Obviously not the circuits part. I can't stand the circuits yet. There was a lot of other interesting topics that you know, I could understand why people would like it. Anyways, these topics include transistors and logic, vectors and differential equations, phasers, more circuits, robotics, upper triangulation, and SVDs. So actually, I'm here at this spot right now, like windows sitting here looking at Evans Hall. And this is my favorite spot to study, as, like I mentioned in my Week in the Life, in my first video ever on this channel. So anyways, I'm talking about the classes this semester, Physics 7B, which is also online. And this is also the second part of the two-part series of the physics series. I didn't think that the second course of this two-part physics course series was going to be any harder than the first physics class, but oh boy, was I all wrong. Uh, this class was already hard in high school for the topics that we learned, such as heat, electricity, and magnetism. So you can imagine how hard it was taking it up to Berkeley level. It was impossible. Most underrated, most difficult class that I've taken at Berkeley. But yeah, this was Physics 7B and I hope to never take physics ever again. So just like last semester, I topped off these three hard classes with some other interesting class, uh, which is Linguistics R1B, Endangered Languages. You know, I wanted to say that I took this class because I thought Endangered Languages was an interesting topic, but to be honest, I just searched up what the best grade distribution classes fulfilled that breadth requirement was. It had an average of an A minus, so I took it and I got an A. So pretty good class. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all I can say about it. So right now we're over here. So here we are in front of Stanley Hall where I actually have a decent amount of classes. One of them being another physics class, but this time it wasn't super hard. Astronomy 7A or Introduction to Astronomy is where is the class I had at Stanley Hall. Thank God it was not as hard as the other physics class that I had because I could not last another physics class at Berkeley. But this class was actually really interesting and it covers super broad range of topics. So these topics include celestial mechanics, distance and brightness of stars, spectroscopy, binary stars, exoplanets, stellar spectra, and solar evolution. Actually, funny story, my roommate Hugo, which is behind the camera, Camera, actually. One time I was feeling lazy and I didn't want to go to class and in the end he convinced me to go to class by saying that he would go with me and considering he doesn't take any STEM major classes and he hasn't taken the astrophysics class probably ever in his life, he probably paid more attention to that class than me and you know he could probably recite whatever he learned in that class um, which is actually quite impressive so that just goes to show that the class was you know was really interesting. This is Evans Hall and it is the ugliest building on campus. They're actually gonna tear it apart. It's actually not safe that's why they're tearing it apart and they're gonna build a huge new campus thingy over here. I'll put a photo right now. 
So here I am in front of the Kresge Library where my team and I spent most of my first semester senior year here and that is because of the class CS162 Operating Systems and Design. And man, I don't even know what to say about this class. This class was by far the hardest class I've ever taken at Berkeley and it was just a combination of workload, the concepts were just hard, it was just so many different things that just made this class impossible. We had homeworks every other week and each homework was as intensive as each project from my first year at Berkeley. And then we had four projects in total and where we designed and built a operating system called Pint OS. And it was just insane. Like I didn't understand anything in that class. Luckily, the professors and staff knew about this. So we were able to get in teams of four throughout the entire semester to work on the projects and mostly the homeworks too. And I got lucky that my group practically carried my ass through the class. But also my group members became one of my close friends and I still talk to them on there regularly. Actually, you've seen Harrison in many videos already. He was in my 162 group. But anyways, going on to the topics that we learned in 162. 162. Oh my god, it's a lot. Okay, so let's just go with a couple from the top of my head, which is actually just written down here. So processes, system calls, concurrency, locks, semaphores, virtual memory, and caching, and a bunch more, which I won't talk about because this video can be hours long. Yeah, thank God for this next class though, Psych 133 or Sleep Psychology. This class was probably my favorite class here at Berkeley just because of how interesting it was and how easy it was too. This class talked about different the behavior of sleep, how animals sleep and how uh, we think like what our brain goes through when we sleep and just a bunch of other factors and facts about sleep that were really interesting and person myself that doesn't get much sleep it was actually really insightful to see what the consequences were of not getting enough sleep and all that stuff. Definitely a really cool class to take 10 out of 10 recommended. Also the professor has a really nice British accent which is definitely a plus but yeah here we are at each East Asian library it has nothing to do with sleep psychology but this place is really nice and it overlooks here if you come with me it overlooks campus and the library itself is also really nice so so lastly, this semester, I took UGBA 135, which is personal finance. It was a pretty, you know, decent class. It was actually online, but here at, you know, the Haas School of Business, I might as well just include that one in too. But yeah, it was a pretty decent class. We learned about uh, general topics concerning uh, personal finance, such as investing, ETFs, stocks. Um, we also learned about real estate, Roth IRAs, timer accounts, all that good stuff. So it was a really interesting class. It was just two units, two hours per week, uh, one day of the week. And uh, let's get out of here. I can hear the hissing already. And the snakes. Hiss. So here we are at Jacobs Hall, and I think you've seen this in my previous video. Uh, this is where I have my Computer Science 160 class. Don't worry, I'll let you know if there's any car coming. You're good. Uh, the cars come from that side. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so here we are at Jacobs Hall. This is where my Computer Science 160 class is, which is user interface, well, UI and UX design. And this class was really interesting. I'm a pretty artsy person, if I say so myself. So I was looking into something like that can combine computer science and art, which is like UI. So we learned a lot about how to design apps and websites and stuff like that, which is really cool. The only thing is that the class wasn't that interesting, <laughs> but the projects were really nice and I made an app with my team, which was fun. So yeah, that was CS 160 at Jacobs Hall. And we're at the really north side of campus, uh, which is where where all the computer science buildings are. Okay, so here we are next to the Sadler Gate. This is a historical landmark of Berkeley, and it's really nice. Lots of people like to take photos here. But fun fact, it was built in 1910. It was actually donated. So some guy decided, you know, here, I'm gonna put a gate here. It's actually located right next to Sprawl Plaza, where the free speech movement uh, took place back a long time ago. I'm not reciting Wikipedia. <laughs> Yeah, so here we are back at Dunell um, from my first semester uh, when I took Math 53, Multivariable Calculus. And in Dunell, I took CS 186, which is databases. And it wasn't that fun of a class. It was actually kind of boring, but it was my last computer science class ever at Berkeley. So I was a bit oversaturated on all the computer science techy, nerdy stuff uh, for my three years here. Um, but overall, I took a class with my friend Harrison, who I met at 162, which I said, you know, just a couple of minutes ago. We learned like how to count IOs in databases, uh, recovery, deadlocks, but overall, not really interesting. And uh, yeah, Donnell Hall is where the lectures were held. Here where you would go if you were to go to lectures. So we're back here at Stanley Hall, and this is where I had my Psych 131 class or developmental psychology. And to be honest, it was just one of these classes I had to take to fulfill a breath. And I wanted to take a psychology class because I took psychology of sleep that I found really interesting. Um, but this one was nothing like that. First of all, it was a lot harder, which I did not expect, and I wanted to chill my last semester at Berkeley. But second, the concepts weren't really that interesting. I mean, it were, but I guess it was just really wasn't for me. Some topics we talked about were 
disorders like ADHD, anxiety, um, suicide, depression, but uh, overall pretty good experience. Definitely recommend that class. It was just not as easy as expected was. <laughs> so for my last class I took at Berkeley is actually called Theater 40 or Introduction to Modern Dance. I know, yeah, nothing to do with anything I've been talking about for the past, you know, 10 minutes or however long it's been. But honestly, this was my last class. I didn't really need the units. I just wanted to do something different. And it was actually a really fun class. Like, I don't know, I'm a swimmer. I don't dance and I'm not very good at dancing. So you won't be seeing any videos of, the, of me dancing, but it was really different. And uh, it was actually really fun. And I met a bunch of people. I mean, my, my, my friend Hugo and my friend Harrison were in it. And I met shout out to Izzy and Anna. And it was just like, overall, it was a super fun class. Just to top it off, really chill, really relaxed. And I don't know, I really liked it. So yeah, that was my last class ever at Berkeley. Okay, so here we are at the library. This is obviously one of the nicest spots on campus, as you can see. And a bunch of people here take grad pics and just chill. So that was my entire computer science degree and also a campus store for you guys. Honestly, these three years at Berkeley have gone by super fast and the computer science classes in general were really hard. Uh, some classes I say like were boring and not. All of them were hard in its own way and I struggled practically in every single class here at Berkeley. But just as they are hard, they're all also really rewarding and I'm surrounded by peers that are much, much smarter than me. And honestly, it's been an amazing experience, which I wouldn't substitute for anything. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, which I will be graduating. So subscribe to see that, and I'll see you then.